Hello everyone, I'm Rob Mithra. Uh, this Lantern Year we will be fighting the Dung Beetle Knight and he has his Dung Ball with him. So it's quite the fight. Um, I know last episode the intro might have been a little spoilery. I think there were some uh, comments on it. So I want to apologize for that if you felt like it was spoiled. I will keep that in mind going forward. And I want to thank everyone for giving me the feedback about it. And I just want to thank everybody in general. I know these videos are just something that I had started doing because a lot of the YouTube channels that I had watched that did Tink and Guth playthroughs, I did it when I was painting my minis and some of them were on hiatus. So then I just decided to do it and I'm glad that um, so many other people find it entertaining. So that's the real reason why I do it. And I just want to thank everybody so much for the motivation to continue doing so. And let's fight a dung beetle night. Thank you very much. Here is the hunt board. It's all set up for the uh, dung beetle night. It's only level one. So uh, first we have random, then two dung beetles, then a random. So like I always say, random survivors or random events uh, are the most likely to kill survivors. So we will send uh, lightning first to the first random one. Here we go. First random hunt event. 62. Okay. Space between the rocks. The survivors are distracted by a dark crack in the endless sea of stone faces. If any survivor has a pickaxe, they strike the ground, causing a crack to expand into a gaping hole. Bravely reaching inside, the survivors produces a blackened, twisted hunk, gain one iron resource. Otherwise, each survivor rolls 1d10. Lowest scoring survivor comes a straggler. Okay. Uh, let me just look over this really quick. Uh, is anybody prepared? Okay, no one is prepared. So, with that said, let's find out who the straggler is. First for lightning, a 10. Thunder, a 6. Kenna, ooh, a 2. And arrow. Also a 2. Alright. Kenna. Again. A 10. Arrow. Again with a 2. Okay, the straggler stops to gaze into the depths and refuses to stop staring. When the other survivors drag them away, they babble incoherently. Whatever they saw changed them forever. They gain one random disorder. Okay, so Arrow just got herself a random disorder. So, let's do random disorders. Oh, stupid random hunt events. I'm doing random stuff. All right, here we go. Okay, um, oh. So she's got some post-traumatic stress. So, next settlement phase. You do not contribute or participate in any endeavors. Skip the next hunt to recover. Okay. Um, man, her and her mom, like, skip hunts like crazy. Because uh, Arrow is Caressa's daughter. I couldn't take Caressa out this time because she's also skipping this hunt event from, or this hunt from something else. I forget what she had. Broken rib or something? I forget. She had to skip it. Um, okay, now we have a dung beetle hunt event, so let's go with Thunder. Alright. And we've got practice dummies. Find a training ground of sorts. Roll a d10. Okay. <laughs> okay, here we 
Here we go. Seven. If you have three plus understanding, you realize that the dummies have been damaged in a similar way. Gain the cross arm block fighting art. Uh, does he have three plus? No, he's only got one understanding. A lot of these survivors are pretty new. Uh, cross arm block would have been nice, especially for a tank, but alas, we we're not so fortunate. Okay. Um, done the arrow. Let's do Kenna. Okay. Brown ground. The ground opens into a massive pool, brimming with a creamy and rancid substance. The survivors may brave the muck. If they do, each gains plus one courage and rolls on the table. Okay, let's see what could happen. Uh, so everybody's going to do it once at a time. If you have ten plus insanity, you crack. So you could die. If anybody has ten plus insanity, they could die. Uh, my, is you leap and cross... Oh my gosh. So this is just not very good. Um, at all. Like, it's just bad, but rolling three random hunt events is just even worse. So it's... Might as well do this. Um, so let me read this again. The ground opens into a massive pool brimming with creamy and rancid substances. Survivors may brave the muck if they do. Okay, so you have to do it as a group. You can't just choose one person to do it. Okay, so we'll brave the muck here. Okay. Looks like a lot of people are going to suffer insanity here. Okay, uh, does anybody have 10 plus insanity? No, doesn't really look like anybody has 10 plus insanity, so we don't have to worry about that. Actually, we're not even we're not even really close at all. <laughs> yeah, well, most of these people are either new or yeah. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Uh, first for lightning. Okay, nine sheet. Okay. You leap from the encrusted nuggets to encrusted nugget and safely cross. Skip the next hunt space on the hunt board. If you move over or onto the quarry space, you ambush the monster. Oh, wow. So we'll be ambushing the dung beetle. Um, okay, so we're ambushing the dung beetle. So now for thunder, uh, we're double ambushing. Now for Kenna. Oh my gosh, we are triple ambushing? And arrow. Yeah, of course. Uh, suffer one plus d10 brain event damage. So she gets three. Okay, now she's down to zero insanity. Okay, uh, so we're ambushing the dung beetle. And uh, three minus three insanity. For arrow. Okay. Great. Alright. Uh, let's draw the tactics card. It doesn't appear that there is any random um, terrain to set up for the uh, dung beetle. So uh, I don't have to draw any random terrain right now. But our tactics card will be this. I don't know if we ever got this one. Diversion Tactics. Once per attack, before hit location dice are rolled, any standing survivor who is adjacent to the monster and not being attacked may spend one survival to cancel a hit. Neat. That actually might come into play, actually, because uh, now that we have the full um, Screaming Antelope um, gear set, uh, it's going to be likely that we're going to have two people usually standing around the uh, monster. So that's good. Oh, maybe not. I don't know. Because she can attack from two spaces away since so she does have spear. 
Uh, maybe. I don't know. We'll see if we use it. I don't think I've ever used every one of these, any of these tactics that we've drawn. Okay, so now I will set up for the showdown. And here's the showdown for the uh, Dung Beetle Knight. So, uh, we are going to ambush him, but what the plan here is, is actually, he's supposed to be here. What the plan here is, is to uh, kill him as fast as possible literally not caring anything about proficiencies or anything and try and kill him as fast as possible. Um, here are the terrain cards that are in play. The acanthus plant is in play uh, because of the screaming bracers. So, I mean, we've used acanthus plants before. There's no real need in explaining them. Here's bug patch. Again, we've used that so many times, no real need in ex explaining them. And then there's a whole bunch of columns. There's actually six of them. So uh, these are just impassable. No really need in explaining them. Okay, so there's the terrain cards. Now here is the Dung Beetle Knight himself with the toughness 12 and the movement of seven. He's got a lot of cards in play. Um, a lot of traits. He's going to start with four traits in play. So, first off, we'll start with this one. He's got separation anxiety. So with this, it's when the monster is not adjacent to his resin dung ball. So right now he is adjacent to his resin dung ball. I also, when I fight him, I keep one of these tokens out. So it's like a little green token. You can see I place it on him when he has separation anxiety and when he does not and that's that little green X because a ton of his hit location cards and a ton of his AI cards all deal with whether or not he has separation anxiety so that's how he gets it it's when he's not next to his dung ball next uh, he's got this which is just something that he does or here, I'll, I'll do power forward first. So as you can see, the green X, the green X up there, that's when it says he's not going to perform uh, power forward because he would, if he does or does not have separation anxiety. Most of these traits aren't really traits like you would, like the other monsters have where they have them do things. A lot of these are just like attacks. Um, so when they happen, I can explain them. But yeah, a lot of his stuff is just basically an attack, whether or not he does it with his with the ball or not. So when they happen, I'll explain them. And with that said, we are ambushing him, so he's not going to start off with the um, with with going first, which is great because he does really crazy amounts of damage, <laughs> like really crazy amounts of damage. That's why I want to kill him as fast as possible if I can. Um, and um, he usually fights, or he usually targets stinky survivors and far survivors, like the farthest away that he can get is usually the kind of survivor, or usually what he does with his AI, if, if I remember right. I've, you don't usually fight him a ton, maybe once or twice per campaign, but so if I remember right, he always usually targets far, far away people and throws his ball at them. So it's hard to really tank um, him, but there are ways around it. Um, so with that said, we'll get started here. We are ambushing him. So what we will do is what we always do. First with the bow, we're going to shoot him with the cat arrow to get minus one evasion on him. Five. So we want one, two, three. We want to move her like here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Um. She's gonna have to move here. Is this where it was? One, two, three. Yeah, she's gonna have to go here. That's pretty close. Oh well, well that's fine. Like I said, he normally is gonna target far away people. So. Five. Okay, so first we're going to shoot him with the one speed, range nine, 
just to get the uh, hit. I know I'm measuring out five because I'm probably going to surge with her. That's why I was doing that. But Okay, so the first shot, the range nine with the claw head arrow, which is accuracy six plus, but because we're shooting slow, it's going to get plus four accuracy. So it's going to hit on a two plus. She's got an eight accuracy. It's going to hit unless I roll a one. So here we go. So that is a hit. With that, he does get the minus one evasion now. So I'll give him the minus one evasion token. Where is the minus one evasion? So he's got minus one evasion now. Because of the claw head arrow. Because you don't need to win with it as long as you hit. If you hit the monster, it gets the minus one evasion. Okay, so now we will draw the first hit location. Okay. Now, this wound, the monster... Uh, stumbles backwards, S suffers knockback three directly away from the attacker, and then performs ground pound. Okay, or if we crit, if the attacker has three plus courage and is adjacent to the monster. Um, wow, they may attempt to tackle it. Okay. Okay, well, she's not adjacent to it anyway, so. But I would like to crit to cancel that wound reaction, perhaps. Would be great. Okay. So she's got a plus four luck. So she has an, one luck innately. Then she's got uh, the Vespertine bow is deadly, so that's two luck. She's got um, plus three luck, or plus another luck from the uh, blue charm. So my bad, she's only got plus three luck. Yeah, plus three luck, right? Yeah, plus three. My bad. So she crits on a 7, but now for her strength, he's got toughness 12. She's Clawhead Arrow has 6 strength. She's got a natural 2 strength. So she's got 8 strength. He's got toughness 12, so it's going to wound on a 4, crit on a 7. Okay. So that's just a regular old wound. So one wound. She gets her bow proficiency. We'll mark that. Okay, now this happens. Unfortunately, the monster stumbles backwards and suffers knockback three directly away from the attacker and then performs ground pound. Okay, so we remove the wound. Uh, knockback three, huh? Oh, I forgot to get the terrain card for the ball. <laughs> Let me grab that real quick. Uh, resin dump ball terrain card. Okay. Okay, so it's indestructible, so that means it can never be removed. Uh, you can use an action to push it, but he's going to get knockback three, so he's going to go... Uh, I actually forget what happens when the monster bumps into it. I don't think anything happens. I think... Um, uh, when it, so, Dumb Biblical Knight can suffer knockback just like a survivor. When it does, move the monster the indicated number of spaces away from the source of knockback. This would move the monster into or over the resin ball, stop the monster's movement just before it. Then move the ball 1d10 spaces in the same direction the monster was traveling. Huh. Okay, so it just bounces into it. Okay. Really has to be 1d10 and not just the 3. I guess it makes sense because it would, you know, carry momentum. It got hit into it right away. So let's make sure it's 1d10. Uh, stop the monster movement just before it moved the ball 1d10 spaces in the same direction. So it's going to go back and the ball is going to move. Oh, wow, eight spaces. So this is going to hit the wall. Yeah, it's going to hit the wall. Okay, so now he does have separation anxiety. Okay, so now we've resolved the knockback, which you're supposed to do first. Then now he'll perform ground pound. So you do the knockback first, then the ground pound. So with ground pound... Okay. The monster slams the ground, precisely altering its network of prepared tunnels. All survivors adjacent to the monster suffer bash, so that's no one. The, vibration, the vibrations create a natural ramp. 
Move the ball 1d10 spaces towards the monster. On collision, any survivors suffer 5 damage to... Okay, so... Let's move him. It's only going to move 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So he still has separation anxiety. Okay. All right. Now we're going to surge with arrow. Spend a survival. That brings her down to three. Survival. All right. Now she's going to do the normal attacks, which is her speed three, accuracy six plus. Uh, he's got minus one accuracy, so that brings it down to accuracy five plus. She's got an eight, one accuracy. So it's a speed three, four plus to hit. Uh, that is three hits. So, three hits. Oh, I wanted to... Mm, crap. All right, I just misplayed this. I wanted to cat eye circle it in between her surging because there's a certain hit location card that I want it get. Well, I guess it's okay because she's still highly likely to crit. So I draw three. One, two, three. Okay. So none of these are first strike, but he's got these special cards here. So, um, so, all right. So this one's going to end unless it's a pair or unless it's a crit. This one's impervious and super dense, um, but he's got separation anxiety. So we're going to just draw, uh, discard and draw a new hit location. Okay. This card and draw a new hit location. Okay. So now still none of these are super dense. Or none, uh, none of these are first strike. Okay, so... Okay, so this one would cause him to move, full move, towards the attack on a failure. Okay, on this one a failure Turn to face directly away from the attacker. The monster... Okay. So this one doesn't make him move. So we'll probably go this one, then this one, then this one. Because this one could... It's the only one that seems to cause him to wound. Let me just look for the sentry carapace real quick. Um, on a failure, feel hopeless, lose one survival if the monster is... Okay. Instead of wounding the monster, archive this card to gain plus one survival. If you attack with a pickaxe, you gain plus three survival. Okay. So there's no way to wound this one. He's not going to move or do anything. So we'll just do this one first just to get rid of it. Okay. Here we go. Um, assuming we even do. So he's got 12 toughness. She's got two strength. Brings it down to 10. Bow has 6. So it's a 4, and then she crits on a 7, but there's no crit on this card anyway, so it's a 4 to wound. It's a wound. So this card doesn't do any damage. Again, instead of wounding the monster, you archive the card. Oops. Instead of wounding the monster, archive the card and gain 1 survival. Okay. So this card gets set aside because there are things that can go in there. Um, so she gains 1 survival back. She's up to 4 again. Okay, so this one does have the critical wound, so it's a 7 plus to crit, um, 4 plus to wound, is a 5, so that is a wound, it's not a failure, but it's not a crit, so that's just this one, gone, not a failure, would have liked to crit because he would have given him a minus 1 toughness, but that's still a wound, okay, uh, now this last one is wound attempts on this location fail unless the wound result is critical. Oh my gosh, we did. Okay. Uh, so it is a critical wound, so it is a, f is a hit, or it is a wound, I mean, and we get a random resource. Uh, okay. So that's another wound. Okay. And get a random resource. Which is 
that scarab shell. Put you there for now, Mr. Scarab Shell. Okay, um, that's the end of her turn now. Uh, we did only we done three wounds, which is great. Now, uh, now I definitely want a cat eye circlet because that was such a mistake that I didn't do it. Because there's a, a certain hit location card in here that if you crit on it, uh, you have a chance of getting a weapon, and that's what I want here. So, the Cat Eye Circlet is Aurora. So, we're going to Cat Eye Circlet. One, two, three cards. I don't know. I don't think this. Okay. So, this one's not going to. If we do this now, uh, what would happen? The monster crushes a keystone. Would the ball 1d10 squares towards the monster? Cancel the reaction on this hit location. Okay. Oh, here it is. This is the one I wanted. The Filthy Resin Sword. Okay. Um, so we're putting this on top. For sure, this one's going on top. Uh, what happens when you critical wound it? The blow shatters the weapon. The attacker gains plus one survival and the regenerating blade regear. The monster suffers knockback five and gains minus one damage token. Okay, so this one goes on top, for sure. Now, uh, if you hit with a club or a shield, gain plus four strength when attempting to wound this location. So this will, where this one's going to go on top, then this one, and this one, because we're, we're going to try to wound him with a shield. Okay, so this one's on top, then this one, and then this one. Okay. So that was Aurora's action. Uh, now she has to move. So Aurora is also stinky. Or not Aurora, this is lightning. I'm not using Aurora anymore. Uh, but yeah, I, I remember now. <laughs> everybody, Aurora is a fist and tooth master, so everybody can stand whenever they want. On the at the start of the, here I have the. So everybody has this now. Everybody From now on, everyone's going to have that unless something kills Aurora. Uh, you may stand if knocked down the start of the monster's turn or at the start of the survivor's turn. So everyone has that now that we have a fist and tooth master. So with that said, she'll move. Uh, actually, she's just going to surge. Um, and then she's going to spend her founding stone. She's going she's to throw the founding stone. Okay, so she's throwing her Founding Stone right now at the Beetle, which is the Sword, which is a critical wound. So uh, the attacker gains plus one survival and the regenerating blade rare gear. The monster suffers knockback five and gains minus one damage token. So he's going to get minus one damage, which is awesome because he does a ton of damage. Um, we get the gear card. And this is Persistent Injury, uh, Broken Blade. So this Persistent Injury now stays in effect. Um, so we had the Regenerating Blade. I'll, I'll remember that. She had free spot because she threw the stone. And that's one wound. Okay, now... So there was a cut there. Sorry, my phone rang. Um, and then I had to go take care of something. So, it's like the worst timing because it was right in between me resolving an AI card or a hit location card. So this is actually like an hour after. <laughs> Sorry, but there's a cut there. Um, so now I just go right back to the game. Um, so I have to resolve the knockback from this card now. Um, so we'll do that real quick. So it's knockback five... Um, okay, so we resolved the knockback. So, this is going to go knockback one. He's going to bump into that again, and then we do the D10 to see how far away it goes. Five spaces. One, two, that's going to go all the way to the end of the board again. 
and then now he still has his separation anxiety. Okay. Um, okay, so just a second while I think here. So she's already gone. She's already surged. She's done. Um, she's the one who threw the founding stone. She could move now. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so what we're going to do here is now we're going to go with Kenna. One, two, three, four. It's going to go here and stop. Now she did move her four spaces, so that does get her her momentum token. Um, we're stopping short. We can't do slam because I don't want to knock into him and knock him back. Um, I want to make sure that Thunder remains the closest survivor. One, two, three, four, five, which he can get to be one space closer. So unfortunately we can't slam. I know we just got the streaming armor. Um, would be nice to do it, but so she's going to stop short and just attack from here. So, uh, King Spear has two speed, six plus accuracy. He's got minus one evasion. Uh, so it's a five plus accuracy. So five plus to hit. Okay. It's one hit. Um, one hit, we travel with one hit location card. I can't remember if I looked at this. Um, oh, okay. All right, I did look at this. All right, I, I must have... I remember now what I was doing. Okay. So I'm still going to do this. Um, but I made a mistake here. Because I, I, I was setting this up so he would attack with the shield. And because I had that stupid phone call and then I had to go do something, um, I lost track of what I was doing. And now I remember, now that I saw this one hit, hit location card, I remember I said, sorry, I would seen this before. Um, okay. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to move with her first. I set this up specifically for him, because he's got a shield. Okay, so what I'm going to do is move with five with him. One, two, three, four, five. Get as close as I can with him, and attack with him first, because I know that stupid shield thing is going to be there. So, the round leather shield is one speed, eight plus accuracy. He's got minus one evasion, so it hits on a seven plus. Um, so, let me just do his thing first. Okay, so that is a 9. That does hit. Now he draws this, and I get this thing with the shield first. Okay. I know technically that I shouldn't have been able to do that. Um, like I said, I got... Sometimes this game takes a long time. <laughs> and sometimes things happen, like my phone ringing, and I had to cut, and I had to go do something. But had I been playing a normal game, I would have remembered that I set this up for him to hit with this shield. Um, and not had to stop and go do something for an hour, hour and a half. Okay, so now he's going to try to attempt to wound this with his club. It doesn't really affect anything, because I'm going to do that with her anyway, with Kenna. So, all right. Now, with her... Okay, so if you hit with a club or a shield, you gain plus four strength attempting to wound. Okay. So, Thunder has plus one strength from this. The round of the shield has one strength. That's two. He's got natural two strength. That's four. Uh, Dung Beetle has a 12 toughness. So, he's going to need to wound on a... Wait. So, plus four strength. That makes five, six, seven. Yeah, so five. One from the leather shield is six. He's got natural two. That 7 against his 12 is a 5. Yeah, so it's going to be a 5 to wound. 
Okay, here we go. Yeah, so it's a five to wound. Okay, so that's an eight. Okay, so that's a wound. It's not a critical. Uh, if you wound with a club or a shield, the monster staggers. It suffers minus four toughness, cancel all reactions until the end of the attack. Okay, so this is perfect. Um, so that's a wound. I'm gonna do one damage. He gains his shield proficiency. Okay. So now he's got minus four toughness until the end of the attack. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. It means he has six hits left. That's correct. She did one. I think she did three. It's four, five. Yeah. So that's that's correct. Okay. Um, now we do Kenna. One, two, three, four. To here. Same exact thing. Um, so two speed, six plus to hit. Minus one evasion is, I don't remember what this hit location card is, but I know I should have been able to see it, right? I think I've seen this. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm attacking anyway. She's the last one to do it. Uh, I don't think it was another shield thing. I don't think I was supposed to surge with him. That doesn't make any sense because I would not want to be surging. Okay. I think I've seen this before, but now I don't remember. Okay. Um... So it's two speed, six plus to hit, he's got minus one evasion. Five plus to hit, two speed. It's two hits, uh, that one of them is a perfect hit. So perfect hit, uh, she has mighty strike. So that's gonna make her, she now got plus two strength. Okay, so she did get two hits, let's draw the two cards. Okay, these are the two cards. I think, yeah, the iridescent leg. I think I looked at this. Uh, I think I looked at it. I don't remember. Okay, so we'll just try to get this carapace out of here. Okay, so pl the plus six makes it 18. All right. So then she's going to have plus two to hit with the perfect strike because she's got mighty strike. That brings it down to a 16. She's got four natural strength, um, brings it down to 12, and then the King Spear has a three strength, so she's going to need a nine to wound. Nine to wound this carapace. Okay. Um. Okay, so nine to wound for the carapace. Okay, so that's a failure. This reaction cannot be canceled. You feel hopeless, lose one survival. Okay, so this just gets discarded. Lose one survival. She's down to five. Okay, now we do the iridescent leg. Um, so this is just a failure. Okay, so for this one, she's got Three strength, she's got from the King Spear. Four strength from herself, that's seven. He's got 12, so it's a five to wound here. And that is a wound. Uh, so she didn't fail, just a regular wound. Caused the one wound. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay. Now, she gains her spear proficiency. Now it is the monster's turn. Okay, so he's suffering from separation anxiety right now. So we do not do power forward. Um, power forward is normally what you start with, but separation anxiety, we're not starting with power forward. Okay, so... Now we draw an AI card, which is Ball Top Spin. Do not perform this card. Instead, perform Ground Pound, then Basic Action. Okay. So we will do Ground Pound first. Ground Pound. 
The monster slams the ground, precisely altering, altering its network of prepared tunnels. All survivors adjacent to the monster suffer bash. Okay, so uh, he's knocked down, which is fine. Can't stand right now, so bad. he's knocked down. Okay. Then uh, there is a, a break here. So, if he can get that ball close to him, let me see. Rage against National Ramp, move the ball 1d10 spaces towards the monster. On collision, any sur Okay, so there's not going to be any chance it's going to collide with anybody. Oh, wait. Kenna is vermin obsessed. So I was thinking about dashing with her to get her out of here, but I forgot. She's vermin obsessed and there's a vermin on the thing, so she can't spend survival. She's doomed until I get that. So that kind of sucks. Okay, so never mind. This this break doesn't matter. I was going to spend survival with Kenna, but it doesn't matter. I can't. So, um, move the ball 1d10 spaces. Okay, here we go. We're going to move to 1d10 spaces. Okay, 6. That's going to get him close enough, right? 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, he's only 4 away. Okay. So now we have performed ground pound. Okay. Now, basic action. So, basic action. So, here we go. Closest knockdown survivor, which is the tank. Closest threat in... No, it's going to be closest knockdown survivor. So, now we... Speed 3, accuracy 3+, plus damage three because he has minus one damage token okay so speed three got that accuracy three plus now thunder has rhythm uh chaser so he's since he got knocked down he's gonna lose that bonus which sucks so he lost that token meaning now he's only got four evasion um so, we will be hitting on a 7 plus to hit. Okay, 7 plus to hit. Um, you know what? Actually, this Flower Knight badge gives an evasion token, and with Rhythm Chaser, when you fall, you lose all your tokens, I think. So I think I just, I think Rhythm Chaser might not be super great. Um, sorry, I gotta find Rhythm Chaser here. Okay, Rhythm Chaser. So with Rhythm Chaser, when you are knocked down, if you don't have an instrument in your gear grid, remove all your plus one evasion tokens. Yeah, so Rhythm Chaser's good and all, but I don't know if it's that great now with this flower badge tonight thing, because now I lose both evasion tokens. Ooh. That's kind of rough. Okay, so he just lost the badge's evasion token. So now he's only got three evasion. So the three evasion comes from his one natural evasion, one from the monster grease, and one from the rawhide vest um, affinities. Ugh. So this is actually going to hit on 6 plus damage 3 each. Oh my gosh, I, I, he missed, not me. <laughs> he missed everything, all three. Awesome. Um, Alright. Now, because uh, that ends his turn, so the separation anxiety, he is not suffering from this anymore. So I put that there. Uh, he stands, so the reason why he stands is we have a fish fist ah the fist and tooth master we have one so all survivors gain the fist and tooth specialization to their weapon proficiencies and the specialization is when you stand if knocked down start at, you st at the start of the monster's turn or the survivor's turn so he'll stand now at the start of the survivor's turn okay so that's that um, how can we get that vermin so I can start spending survival? 
Um, I don't know if there's going to be a way for me to do that. So how many hits do you have left? He's got five hits left. So with lightning here, we're going to cat eye circle it. Two, three. Ooh. Okay, so this is like perfect here. Um, the fact that there's no carapace and no trap here is perfect for um, Arrow to go. So we're going to go with her. So this is a reflex unless on a ground pound. He's going to perform ground pound. So that one, we're probably going to want to do... Okay, this is a reflex. Attackers in within three spaces of the monster, they are grabbed and shoved into the ball. Okay, so we just got to make sure she's not going to be three spaces. One, two, three, four, five. She's going to be here. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, one. She get here. No, this is fine. Where she is here, this is fine. So she's not going to be within three spaces, so that's fine. So this one we'll put on top. Um, failure, perform basic action to the target. This one will go second. So this one will go third because he's going to do ground pound. Okay. So that, that, this, this. Okay, so this was her. Now... So ground pound is going to result in everybody getting bash. So we definitely don't want everybody to get bash um, if they're adjacent. So what we can do is we can go with thunder right now and then spend survival to dash back. So one, two... One, two, three, four, five. Now this might look weird, but I'm going to go... Oh, wait. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to go here, because I, I kind of want to get this vermin so she can start using survival. But I also don't want to be super close to him if he swings that ball around. So... He'll be there for now. Now we're going to shoot... We don't want to go with her yet because that, that one that we saw is within three spaces and she'd be within two. So what we will do is we'll shoot with her now. So she's got three speed with the Vespertine bow. Six plus accuracy. He's got minus one evasion. It's five plus accuracy. She's got natural one accuracy. So it's a four plus and she is a bow specialist. So it's a four plus. She can re-roll this because she's a bow specialist. So that's two hits. It's three hits. Okay, so we got our three hits. We already know what they're all gonna be. Two, three. Now we're gonna do them all in the order we said, which is this, then this, then the one that causes the ground pound. Okay, now Okay, so first is this one, which is the reflex within three spaces of this monster. They are grabbed and smashed into the ball. Place the attacker into the resin ball. They collide, blah, 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 blah. It's not going to happen, the first one, because she's not within three spaces. So, Vesperine Bow has uh, strength six. She's got natural two strength, so that's an eight. She's going to wound on a four and crit on a seven. Wound on a four, crit on a seven. So that is a wound. Okay, so the first one's a wound. So one wound. Okay, that's this. Next card is the failure. Perform the basic action. So again, wound on a four, crit on a seven. Uh, that is a critical. Gain one random... Dung Beetle Knight resource. The monster vomits chunks of boiling resin that hit the ground and momentarily and momentarily from any un gain plus one strength token. You may spend four survival. Cherish this moment if you do forever plus one permanent strength. So she does not have four survival. That sucks. But she'll gladly take the plus one strength token. So she's got herself a plus one strength token. Okay. 
and we gain a random dung beetle knight resource. And then, of course, we do a wound. Go ahead and take that. Underplate fungus. So we'll go ahead and put that right there. Okay. And then, of course, we do the wound. Okay. Now, this one here. The one that was going to cause ground pound unless we crit. So, again, wounding on a four, critting on a seven. Crap. So that's just a wound. I would have liked a critical wound. Um, but whatever. So we cause one more wound. Now he's going to perform ground pound. Okay, ground pound. Uh, the monster slams the ground, precisely altering its network of repaired tunnels. All survivors adjacent to the monster suffer bash. No one's adjacent to him. Okay. The vibrations create a national ramp. Move the ball 1d10 spaces towards the monster. Uh, it's already right next to him. So it can't really move any more towards him. Um, so... I guess we just roll and it, I don't know, moves around him? That's what we're going to do. So I'm going to move one space. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, right? It's just going to move around him. It doesn't collide with him. That'd be dumb. It just moves around him. Whatever. I don't, that's, that's how I'm taking it. Okay. Now... So, we want to make sure that he starts with separation anxiety again. Actually, he's only got two wounds left. Um, but, you know what? We, we want to make sure he's going to start with separation anxiety. So, what we're going to do is we're going to slam. Okay. Spend to full move forward in a straight line. Oh, wait. She can't slam. Hmm. Man, I, I would like to get to be able to slam. Um, should I surge and can I circle it again? Yeah, you know what? We're going to surge and we're going to can I circle it again. So lightning's going to surge. That brings her down to four survival. She's going to can I circle it again. One, two, three here. Uh, this is a neat card, but, I mean, we're obviously we're going to put that one at the bottom. I just wanted to say that's a neat card, but it's going to the bottom. Um, so let's look at that one. So the Swarm of Botflies here, it's a unique hit location card for monsters as it, it has a, it's a first strike card, which means you always have to select it first if you hit. So the thing that sucks about this is if we go again with Caressa, because I was thinking of, or not Caressa, Arrow, I was thinking about surging with her, and because he's only got two hits left. But surging might draw this, and it sucks. So it's a swarm of botflies gush out from under the Dung Beetle Knight's armor. Roll 1d10 and add your courage. If the result is greater than 6, you ignore them. Otherwise you suffer brain damage and are knocked down. So it's going to knock down whoever attacks if they do three damage, or if they hit three wounds in this situation. Now, um, Kenna's only has, or King Spear only has two speed, so that's good. And she has an insane amount of courage, so actually I could just, I could clear it with Kenna just to clear it, because there's no way she can fail. Um... Because last year we saw the truth with her. So she's got, um, was it, 10 courage? She can't fail. So maybe I should just do this with Kenna now. So you know what? Actually, I'm going to put this one on top and do that with Kenna right now. She's going to attack. Hopefully she'll land two hits just to clear this out of the way. Then this helm 
Uh, this is the plus four shield, so we'll put this one on the bottom with the shield, just in case whatever Kenna doesn't do, maybe we'll finish it off with Thunder, because he can attack with his shield. And then this one, normally you discard it if he has um, separation anxiety, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen because I can't... I was hoping to slam into him, cause him to knock back, and then push his own ball away, and then give him separation anxiety. That way we wouldn't have to do power forward. But... Uh, things change. It look like I'm just going to kill him. <laughs> That's, I'm going to hope I can kill him. <laughs> um, okay, so what we're going to do is put this one on the bottom. So this one, without separation anxiety, what are we going to have to do here? The monster guides the... Oh, this is super dense and pervious. Ooh. Okay, so we're just going to do these two. So this one, you can't even wound this. Um... Because it's impervious. So this is just like a nothing burger. You just draw it, you discard it. Well, you rolled, and then... So we can only do one damage here with this. So, okay, okay, okay. Let's try... Okay, yeah, we're, so we're going to clean this... We're going to clean up the bot flies with Kenna. Then we're going to do this. Um... This is a weird card, because you can crit this super dense and pervious. This is a weird card, because this doesn't necessarily happen right away. Normally when this when it reads like that, it would happen right away, but you could I guess you could stop it from happening with a critical... Well, not stop it from happening, but... Okay, either way, what we're going to do here... We're going to clean up the bot fly. So bot flies are going to go on top. Okay, so that's what we're doing. Okay, so... Yeah, here we go. So Kenda's just going to attack. She's not even going to move. So we got two speed, six plus accuracy. He's got minus one evasion, so it's a five plus accuracy. Uh, that's two hits. So we already know what they're going to be. The, the bot flies will just roll. Um, we're just going to do that right now. The result is greater than six. You ignore. Okay, it's great. I mean, I rolled a ten. It doesn't even matter. She had ten courage, so th this is just ignored. Okay, so we're just going to put that right there. Now let's draw the second card. We know what this one is. Okay, here we go. So for her to wound, it's going to be... She's got three strength from the King Spear. She's got a natural four strength. That's seven. Then she will need a five to wound. Okay, so that's a wound. It's not a critical. If you with a club or a shield, the monster stares. So it's minus four. Don't cancel all reactions. Next selected thing. Okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, so she did a wound. That gets rid of this ball spin. Now he's just down to basic action. Um... Okay. Now she can move. One, two, three, four. Yeah, we'll move here four spaces away. That one, two, three, four. That way she might be able to slam next round. Because remember, she can't do any survival because of that stupid vermin. Okay, now... Basic action. This is what he's down to. Closest knockdown survivor or closest threat. So if no one's knocked down, he's going to do closest threat. Okay, so... One, two. He's two away. She's five away. Do I just surge with arrow to get away? Or dash with her to get away? Hmm, hmm, hmm. He's also going to do power forward. There's nothing I can do about power... Okay, he's going to do power forward. So what's this going to do? Furthest Stinky Survivor, which right now is Lightning. Okay. Turn to face the target. Perform Baller. Okay. And then move the ball. Okay. So, Kenna was here. Let's see. What am I doing? So, we'll go one, two, three, four... Five. We'll get Kennedy here. That's also going to give her another momentum token. I forgot about that. So 
because she's moving. Okay, so he's going to turn to face. So he is already facing her. He's going to perform ball or move the ball. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. She can run away. One, two, three, four, five. Because she never moved. She cat I circled, then I surged to cat I circled again. Okay. Okay. Um, and then full move the monster towards the ball. Then he'd perform basic action. Which would be the closest threat, which is be her again. Okay, so I don't want that. So how one, two, three, four, five. So let's say instead of moving her away, we move her to here. One, two, three, four, five, six spaces away. And then we spend survival with thunder, because we were gonna dash back into the area to try to kill him, but so we'll spend survival now to dash with thunder. So one, two, three, four, five. That would make him one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spaces away. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, he's seven spaces away. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now he's the furthest stinky survivor, and then we're just gonna block with him. So we moved, then we dashed, now we're just blocking. Okay. End of our turn. Now he's not suffering from things. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna power forward. All right, so the furthest thing he's survivor. We know that's going to be Thunder because he's wearing the monster grease. Okay, turn to face and perform baller. Move the ball towards the target. Okay, so first we're going to do baller, which is this trait. Okay, so the monster spins the ball around itself. Tremendous force. All survivors in the red zone suffer collision. So, he's just going to do this. As you can see, no one is in within spaces of him. He's going to stop there. So he's swinging the ball around, he stops there. Um, that's baller now performed. Okay, now we move the ball 2d20, or 2d10 spaces through the target. On collision, any survivors suffer 5 damage to a hit location. Okay, so now we've performed baller. Now we're gonna go 2d20. Or 2d10. Yep, that's definitely enough. That's 13 spaces. <laughs> one, two, three, four. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So he sh just chucked that thing all the way to there. And then it hits the wall and stops. Okay. Now, on collision, any survivor suffers five damage to star hit locations. So that star means monster level. He's monster level one. So he's going to suffer five damage. Uh, it's to his body. So he's got three on his body because of the um, rawhide set and his shield. So that gives him three of his body. This is going to be five. So that's going to be a heavy body injury that he just suffered because... Whew, Okay, so that knocks him down. Okay. Now he's knocked down. Okay, now the full move monster towards the ball. Oh wait, did he suffer collision? Okay, yeah, so he suffered collision. So that moves him away to the most uh, free empty space. So he's knocked down here. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Monster can't make it all the way. This is destroyed by the ball itself. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So he has separation anxiety right now because he couldn't make it to the ball himself. Or, well, put that here. Separation anxiety. Oops. So you can see it. Okay. That's the end of power forward. Oof. Rough. Rough, rough, rough. Now... Um, I could have tumbled out of the way, but he doesn't have tumble. That kind of sucks. Okay, now we do basic action. Now, basic action. Closest knockdown survivor, which is obvious. <laughs> so he's going to turn to face. Okay, still put the... Okay, 
Speed 3, Accuracy 3, which we know is actually, actually Accuracy 6 plus. So it's going to be Speed 3, Accuracy 6 plus, Damage 3. Uh, now remember we blocked one, so we can, we're can going to have one to block. So it's Accuracy 6 plus. 6 plus. Okay, that sucks. That sucks quite a bit. That really sucks. Okay, so one is blocked. One we're going to dodge. Okay, that brings it down to four survival. So we actually did get hit here. Okay, so it's going to be three damage to anything but the body. The waist. Fine. That just all of his armor at the waist because he had three there. Okay. Uh, and then full move the monster towards the resin dung ball. So he's not suffering from separation anxiety anymore and he just moves over one space. I guess he would turn to face to move. Um, okay. Now he stands. Okay, um, let's see on the basic action. Now, can I circle it in? One, two, three. Okay. Um, this sucks. Impervious, imp there's two impervious things here. So this one goes on top, this iridescent back. Okay, iridescent back goes on top, and then I guess... Uh... Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's iridescent top, then I guess the... Or iridescent back is on top. Okay, um, so we have to kill him. We have to kill him, because this just, this just, he does way too much damage. One, two, three, four, five... He's going to get to there, or... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, she's going to get to here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. She's shooting with her Vespertine bow with the range nine. Uh, slow, so it's only got one speed. Range nine has plus four accuracy. She's got natural one accuracy. That's accuracy five. Hits on a... So she just misses on a one. Okay, she gets to reroll that because of bow specialist. Okay, that, I almost had a heart attack. <laughs> okay, okay, that's a wound, or that's a hit. Uh, so this is a reflex. So, here we go. Six strength. She's got three strength because she was given a, a plus one strength token. Uh, nine strength. She wounds on a three plus, crits on a seven. That's not a crit, it doesn't matter, it's a wound. <sighs> when I rolled that first one with her, I almost had a heart attack. <laughs> so that's the last hit. He's dead. Um, uh, okay. Okay, um, so that's that. He's dead. Um, so let's do rewards. So, rewards. The group investigates the large resin dung ball and the network of tunnels beneath the battleground. Inside the ball, they find a caustic but minimal rinse sustenance. Rolling aside the ball, they find passageways leading deeper underground. After collecting rewards, spelunking of death. Okay, so let's aftermath. Everybody gained their proficiency except for lightning, which is fine. Um, everybody gets, so everybody gets one hunt experience, because it was only level one. So, arrow, one hunt experience. Kenna, one hunt experience. Thunder, one hunt experience. And lightning, one hunt experience. Alright. So... Then rewards. So for level one, it's what is it? Um, six basic, four dung beetle, 
and two caustic preserved dung. Okay, so caustic preserved dung. So that's this and this. So we will take these. These are used, will be used in the settlement event. So we'll get those. So we got two preserved dung. Uh, we've also got, which is basically a hide, two hides on the scarab shells. Okay, now we're going to get basic resources, which was, what was it, six basic and four dung beetle? Is that what it was? Yeah, six basic and four dung beetle. So let's take our six basic here. Six basic. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's two hide, a lantern, two organs, and a monster bone. Okay, that's the six basic. And now for the four dung beetle knight resources. Uh, scarab wing, century shell, yeah. elytra, and century fingernails. Okay. That's it. Okay, now we do this spelunking of death. The first time the, oh, the first time the sun with defeats the dumb might after they've innervated storytelling secret meeting to the timeline but we do not have storytelling so we don't get secret meeting okay so spelunking of death here we go the group investigates the monster's network of tunnels and are inspired by the rich vegetation if your settlement does not already have it gain subterranean agriculture innovation so subterranean agriculture it's right here so this is a neat one uh, we'll do this in the settlement event, but uh, allows us to build a resin crafter. So, neat. We now have this. And... Nominate up, up to four victorious survivors from the last showdown to be Spelunkers. One at a time. Each Spelunker rolls 1d10 on the table below. Okay. So we can nominate up to four people. We don't have, this is something we don't have to send everybody out just to die <laughs> doing. So, um, really, um, I mean, as much as I would love to get all the way through the end of this, it's not very reasonable. But you do gain a courage, so I can't trigger bold with anybody. So Kenneth benefits nothing from doing this because you're most likely going to gain courage, like a 10% chance of getting strength. So Kenneth gets nothing from this. Arrow gets nothing really from this. Uh, Thunder, we don't want to really do that because he's our only shield expert, so... Uh, lightning would be nice to get some strength. We'll do it just for fun with lightning. Here we go. Just for funsies with lightning. We need a 7 plus. A 4. So, uh, we get another preserved caustic done. Okay. So that's it. <laughs> One more preserved caustic dung, which I don't even think I have a use for, but whatever. Got a third one. Um, that's it. I don't want to do it with anybody else. It's very high likelihood of death for very little reward. This plus one strength is not super necessary. Okay. And that's the end of the showdown. And we will do the settlement event. Um... I think I'll try splitting these episodes up because the settlement event is going to be huge because I have a lot to do in that settlement event. 
Um, yeah, I have to do Hooded Night. I have to do Hands of Heat. Um, I have to do this Subterranean Agriculture. I have to go through all the resources, pick them all out. Uh, we're probably going to trigger some bearing of weapons. This is a huge settlement event, too. So that will be it. Plus, it's nice just to have the episode without the settlement event just for the Dung Beetle fight, even though it was not... I mean, power forward... I mean, you could see he almost killed that guy. He would have basically killed that guy. So, uh, Dung Beetle, super dangerous. He does a ton of damage. So, oh, we also got the Regenerator Sword. Uh, I can grab that out real quick. Uh, well, I'll show it off in the settlement event. So, assuming that the settlement event isn't also included in this episode, thank you so much for watching. Um, the support that the series continues to get is so very humbling. Um, I never would have expected that much. So, thank you very much. And the settlement event will be a huge one. And I'm looking forward to losing... 17 or 20 resources. <laughs> so I'll see you at the settlement event. Thank you very much.